Good morning, KU, and welcome to this Tuesday edition of Good Morning, KU. I'm Ben Birchstead, alongside my partner, Jack Graham. And it is to my knowledge, ladies and gentlemen, that my fantastic partner is part of the track team. How did we meet this past Thursday? How'd that yeah. go? Yeah, uh, it went pretty well. We were in Waco, Texas at Baylor. Um, it went pretty well overall. Um, I think that we, I think it was second place that we landed. Hey. Um, so I, I don't know, we'll take it. We'll take it for early in the season. Um, we had some pretty good overall um, individual performances as well as um, some team performances with our 4x4s and 4x1s. Um, it looked really good. Um, I had my first steeplechase this weekend. Is that so, a boy? How'd it go? Um, good. I got third place. Not what I expected, but um, I'll take it for the first hey. one. It was definitely just as hard as everybody says it will be so but i'm excited to see where it'll take me so absolutely good yeah. stuff so how was your easter weekend easter weekend was all right kept my grandma company a little bit on the low-key side not gonna lie yeah but uh we had a little egg toss competition she dropped the egg because you're from nebraska yeah right? nebraska okay, yeah so but a lot of my family lives in though. kansas city so awesome. just go right there to them Sweet. what about you yeah um i went home just for Saturday evening and Sunday during the day and had a good time with the cousins and the there you family go. and um, also happy 50th birthday to my mom she'd probably kill me for saying her age but I love you so much <laughs> so we got to celebrate that this weekend um, and yeah so that was that was a good time just getting to spend time with the family so um, there you go. yeah it was good stuff. national championship did you watch it I did um, good stuff I was pulling for Wisconsin because who likes Duke uh, true, true. I was pulling for Wisconsin. A lot of unheralded recruits mm -hmm. on their team. A lot of in-state guys. Duke's pulling from like all over the country. Yeah. These guys, just a lot of Wisconsin guys. Yeah, and it was really exciting in the first half because Wisconsin were holding themselves down pretty well. I mean, it looked pretty yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, and at one point, I think they were up by nine. Yeah. Even in the second half, they looked pretty good for the first five minutes, and then it kind of slowly... <sighs> started going towards Dukes. I just, yeah. I don't know if Wisconsin ran out of steam, yeah. but it, Duke, Grayson Allen, mm -hmm. made, I think he had 16 points in the national championship and he had 18 points total yeah. throughout the entire NCAA tournament. Yeah, and as much as, you know, we all hate Duke over here at the University of Kansas, you gotta give it to him. They played a great game and had a yeah. great season. And congrats to Coach K, you know, he's a stud, but he is still hate you. Definitely a great coach, but nobody really likes him. <laughs> and also on sports, <laughs> Um, how are you feeling about that Royals home opener? Hey, how about them Royals? 10-1 yeah. over, we got a buddy in the studio, his name's Nick, he's a White Sox fan, so make sure to give him a little bit, 10-1 over his team today. Yeah, you know, we looked really good, especially on the offensive side of things, and you know, Alex Rios had a great debut going 3-4, hey, and four, so. Love that, new guy coming up. in, making a contribution, he needs to show everybody what he's got. Yeah. And he's been love around it. for a pretty good amount of time, so I think he knows what he's doing at this point, so. Absolutely. Hopefully it's going to be another great season, but if we can take it one more game farther and get that World Series I feel I feel year. like it could. Just don't hold up Alex Gordon at third this year. Absolutely. I'm saying send him. <laughs> yeah, so. That's what we need to do. Things will be looking up, so that's all, that's all we got. Yeah, well, next coming up next, we have Haley McGavick with Josh Jones for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So stay tuned, Lawrence. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm here with Josh Jones, the coordinator of student act or conduct and community standards. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Okay. We're here today to talk about Sexual Assault Awareness Month, otherwise known as SAM. Um, so Josh, what can you tell me about that? Kind of like the background of SAM. Yeah, uh, events started as early as about 1976. Take Back the Night Marches started uh, by, by women's groups. Uh, it wasn't until about 2009, I believe, that President Obama officially proclaim, proclaimed April as uh -huh. uh, Sexual Assault and Man Awareness Month, but it's a month to bring awareness uh, to a really important topic on our campuses. Yes. And how did you get involved with SAM yourself? This has been a really collaborative effort. Um, so I work in the Student Affairs Office, Student Affairs, uh, Watkins Health Services, IOA, Student mm -hmm. Housing, Silk, uh, um, Public Safety, uh, Gadu our care coordinator, we are all involved in uh, making this month happen, mm -hmm. uh, putting up a lineup of events to not only raise awareness, but then move us past awareness and into action. Mm -hmm. 
And um, do you think the events or the al allegations last year that were kind of controversial about sexual assault kind of open people's eyes up to maybe that it does happen or it can happen on college campuses and this is an issue that needs to be addressed? I think it did, and now we just need to make sure that we keep that momentum going forward. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got KU data, our, our, the NCHA data that uh, about 1,100 students took. We know that about one in five KU students is going to experience some form of sexual assault or sexual uh, violence, and one is too many, so yes. one in five is far too many. Mm -hmm. And um, what type of events will be going on this month to kind of, I guess, bring awareness to this topic? Sure. So the first event, uh, SUA presented Lacey Green last Friday. We had a great uh, crowd. Uh, check out the yesterday's UDK. Uh, her eight tips for how to uh, change uh, culture on campus was, mm -hmm. was printed. Um, we have David Lisak, who's going to be speaking Monday, April 13th. He's a psychologist, does a lot of research around uh, interpersonal violence. Uh, Thursday, April 23rd is our Light Up the Night event uh, in front of Danforth Chapel. We're going to have a, a large uh, light illuminating to try to shine light on this topic. Uh, no open flame candles, but if you have tea lights or electric candles, put them in your window, show your support for survivors. April 23rd, we're going to be screening the Hunting Ground movie. Uh, this is a really fantastic movie. I encourage everyone to come out to Woodruff, watch the movie, and then we're going to have a dialogue afterward to kind of look at you know, what are the issues? Uh, what are other campuses doing? What's our campus doing? What more can we be doing? And what can we do better? And then the month is gonna end, uh, close out uh, April, I think, 30th uh, with the Take Back the Night uh, Solidarity March and Speak Out Circles, and that's uh, sponsored by Gotta Be. Awesome, do you think these events will help um, inform students more about this? I think they will. I think there's gonna be a lot of great discussion, a lot of great dialogue. Um, again, and then it's how do we all, how do faculty, staff, and students here at KU, as well as the Lawrence community, mm -hmm. work together to create awareness and then, and then go forward and take action against uh, sexual assault yes. and sexual violence. Mm -hmm. Do you think more events like this could help us as a campus and as a student body overall eventually overcome um, sexual assault more? Or? You know, it's, it's going to be a process, but yes, I think we can all work together. We can start taking down uh, the rape culture that exists on campus, break down uh, gender stereotypes, um, hold uh, those that do commit this uh, responsible, mm -hmm. um, and educate yourself. If, if you're not sure, uh, if you go to the Emily Taylor website and click the Get Involved button under the SAM page, we can send out a multidisciplinary team to talk to you about consent, to talk to you about uh, campus policy. Uh, again, representatives from all of those departments are available to put together a team and tailor a, a presentation specifically for your student organization. Yes. Okay, well, do you have anything else you'd like to add that maybe I forgot? Just go to, uh, go on to Twitter, use hashtag KUSAM, uh, and tweet your support for survivors and why you're going to take a stand against sexual assault. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us today, Josh. We'll be back after the break with Lauren and Gabby. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. I'm Lauren Davidson and I'm back with Gabby Yeager. Thanks for joining us today, Gabby. No problem. Gabby is here from um, Center for Community Outreach and she will be talking about um, Into the Streets. It'll be their 15th annual and it's basically seven days of volunteering, correct? Yeah, we have 14 different events going on this week. Um, we have 12 different programs. So that's just kind of a small glimpse of our weekly volunteering that we do throughout the entire school year. And so with multiple events each day, um, I know that there are a few that you guys would really like students to go out to um, starting tomorrow. So tomorrow will be Empty Bowls Project and it will also be occurring again on Friday. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit about Empty Bowls Project? Yeah, for just a $5 donation um, in the lobby of the Kansas Union, you can get a handmade bowl created by the Lawrence community and you also get lunch. So there's a chili feed and all the proceeds from the Empty Bowls Project go to the Lawrence Community Shelter. So it's a really easy way to give back and help people who are really going to appreciate it. So. Get delicious food and yeah, help. Yeah, that's always a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> and so then going on to Thursday, you guys will have your keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. um, 
Derek, mm -hmm. would you like to talk a little bit about him and what he'll be talking about? Yeah, this is going to be a really great speaker talking about service opportunities. So if you're interested in nonprofits, volunteering, he is the founder of the Global Soap Project. So he uses um, resources in the United States and gives back to people in third world countries. So it's really interesting and I think that all majors could really benefit and go see this keynote speaker. Very informative, yeah. that, sounds, that sounds amazing. Um, and to wrap it up, on Tuesday night, you guys will be having your hunger banquet. Yeah. And that includes what? That is basically a poverty and hunger simulation, and that is going to be in the Kansas Union at 6 p.m. And it's where Chipotle brings a donation, and you kind of ration out the food in a way that simulates hunger throughout the entire world. So it's very eye-opening, and you can really see how people all across the world are eating, so, yeah. <laughs> wow. Where can we find you on social media? We are active on basically all aspects of social media, but if you go to volunteer.cco.ku, volunteer.ku.edu, you can, sorry about the mess up, but you can learn about more of our weekly volunteering, and you can learn more about Into the Streets Week, and we're also active on Facebook and Twitter, but I would really recommend going to the CCO website to get involved. And so basically everyone and anyone can attend these events, highly encouraged, and to be able to volunteer, go to the website that Gabby mentioned. Um, great events coming up this week for a great cause. Um, again, 15th Annual Into the Streets. And thank you for joining us, Gabby. Next, we'll be back with the news. Welcome back, I'm Faith Reese and this is your Tuesday Good Morning KU News Update. Jury deliberations are expected to start today for the trial of the Boston bombing suspect Zokar Sonarov. After prosecutors tied the two brothers together as a unified terror team, Sonarov's attorney attempted to convince the jurors that he was just an accomplice. The jurors will pick apart the this, this statement and the 15 days of testimony to decide which story is true. Chicagoans returned to the polls for the city's first mayoral runoff. The USA Today reports that after six weeks, none of the five mayoral candidate, candidates won an absolute majority of votes, so they will return again and decide and vote again to decide mayor. The Culture Trip is a website dedicated to finding the best art, food, culture, and more throughout different parts of the world, and just named the 10 best restaurants in Kansas. Four of them are home to Lawrence. According to the UDK, the four were 715 Restaurant, The Burger Stand, Free State, Free State Brewing Company, and Merchants Pub and Plate. Lawrence was the only city to be repeated on the list, as others were located in Prairie Village, Kansas City, Wichita, and Manhattan. The Academy Award-winning documentary Farmland showed last night in the Kansas Union Theater. The film is about farmers and their daily struggles. It's just like a good, intimate, in-depth look at their lifestyle and their passion for what they do. You might be wondering why this was beneficial for students to see. So if nothing else, you just come to see where you see how your food is produced. Not really, not that many people really know where our food's coming from or how it's made. So, and it was also relatable to students our age who live different lifestyles. And it's also kind of related to us because it's from 20 to 26. Or yeah, the like 20 in our yeah. 20s. So it's like our age group. Yeah. These in these people like are running an entire farm. Like produce. They even gave away money for every person that showed up, t and to the biggest organization that was there. And that will wrap it up for the news update. After the break, Dallas will be here with sports. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas. A great place to be you. And I'm Dallas with sports. In the championship game of the Men's March Madness Tournament, number one seeded Duke defeated Wisconsin last night with a score of 63-68. 
Tyus Jones was given the championship most outstanding player as he scored 23 points for the Blue Devils. Here's what Jones had to say about the win. This is just such a special group and, you know, the, the best team that I've ever been a part of. And we've worked hard all year, and this has been, you know, our one goal that, that we were working for. And no matter if it was getting up extra shots or, uh, you know, extra running, trying to get in better shape or, you know, tough practices, um, just, just believing in one another, believing in coach and everything that, you know, they're telling us, you know, because, you know, we knew at the end if we did accomplish this, it was, it was all going to be worth it. The leading scorer for Wisconsin was Frank Kaminsky, who scored 39 points for the Badgers. Kaminsky was also the Naismith Player of the Year. Duke finished their season with a record of 35-4 on the season, and Coach K won his fifth national championship. Now for Women's March Madness Tournament, it's down to two teams, the championship game, game being tonight between Notre Dame and Connecticut. Connecticut put up 105 points against the fifth-seeded Texas, and Notre Dame defeated Stanford by 21 in the Final Four. Notre Dame and Connecticut will face off in Tampa Bay, with tip-off being at 8.30. Now for KU Baseball and Softball. The baseball team is now 11-20 on the season. They are currently on a three-game losing streak, their last win being against Wichita State in a Sunflower Showdown. Previous three losses were against Big 12 teams, Oklahoma, which occurred this weekend on Oklahoma's Diamond. The next game for the team is tonight against New Mexico at Hogland. Now for softball, the team went 3-0 in a series against Oklahoma State. The women are now sitting at 32 and 5 on the season and they are 14th in the nation. The team is also 4th in the Big 12 being in 3 and 3 in the conference this season. Their next game is this Friday at Texas Tech. Now for NBA, only one game occurred last night when the Nets defeated the Blazers 96 to 106. Batum, Aldridge and Lillard all missed the game for the Portland Trailblazers, who are all in the starting 5 for the team. Now with the playoffs happening in a few weeks, 11 of the 16 possible playoff teams have clinched a spot in the 2015 series. The Hawks have clinched the first spot in the East, the Warriors for the West. The Celtics are sitting at the 8th spot in the East with the Pacers shortly behind. The Thunder of the West is sitting at the 8th spot in the season, even without Kevin Durant, but are only a half a game behind ahead of the Pelicans. Now for the Major League Baseball, the season started on Sunday in Wrigley Field. John Lester received his first loss of the season against the Cardinals with a score of 3 to nothing. First pitch of the season was at 7 o'clock on Sunday, but the first full day for the MLB was yesterday. Going towards Kansas City, the Royals defeated the White Sox 10-1 yesterday, with the only one for place. the White Sox being with a solo shot from Jose Abreu. Jordano Ventura left the game in the seventh inning after a right thumb cramp. Official reports say that the injury is nothing too serious, allowing him to return for his next start. Ventura allowed four hits in six innings and struck out four. Smarja received his first loss for the White Sox, allowing five earned runs. The next game between the two is tomorrow at Kauffman Stadium. And after that, that is all I have for sports. After this break, we will be back and have Jack and Ryan with the weather update. <laughs> And welcome back, everybody. I'm Jack Graham alongside with Ryan on the roof. Ryan, how's it looking out there? Yep. All right. Um, what's the, uh, is it looks a little muggy out there. What's, is it muggy? Okay. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties with Ryan on the roof, everybody, but uh, no worries. I think it was around mid-70s for the rest of the week, around 73 for the Royals game on Friday. But thanks for stopping in and watching our show this morning. Everybody have a great rest of your day. Rock Chalk Jayhawk.